I and probably everyone in this room was brainwashed that men only want one thing. The men were brainwashed that. The women are brainwashed that. All men want that. Sex is love for men. So then for a woman, if it's not the same thing, how do you then Men express love through their men express love through their penis, through love, through sex. This is a beautiful thing about men. This has been made wrong and terrible. Men want to express love sexually. It's a beautiful thing. But in a sex-negative culture, we're not able to see that. They're looking for love. They're looking to express it in the way that men express love. This is, this is um, a tantric perspective that sex and love can be the same thing. But we don't, because of our cultural brainwashing, we're not able to see that men are driven, men are not allowed to see it and women are not allowed to see that men are driven by love and connection in this way. They want to connect, they want to connect, they want to connect, they want to share, they want to express. It's gotten all, yes, it's gotten all convoluted because we live in a sex negative culture. But what if we interpreted all those men who are coming at us wanting a sexual connection as, I'm not going to say yes, but I do notice this hungriness of men to connect. We go, oh, it's sex. What if that sex is beautiful and it's not a negative thing? Yes. Once you're dating somebody and the situation is that you're having some issues and you want to have a conversation with him and he would prefer to make love. Right. Okay. So. I would have to know more about your specific situation, but sex is a conversation. Yeah, I agree. Sex is a wordless conversation. You are communicating about the, pro the difficulties in your relationship when you're having sex. Mm -hmm. So you might want to do it with words. You might want to do it before or after. You might not feel like making, making love at that time. That's you're perfectly, you're in the driver's seat. This is not right for me to make love right now. But you can also open yourself to the possibility that we can have a beautiful conversation about our relationship while we're making love. We've been taught that sex is something over there. And we talk about our relationship like all like mini armchair psychologists with words. And often those conversations make the relationship worse. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. Often having those pseudo-psychological conversations make the relationship worse. There's actual studies about that. Okay? We're so tired trying to work this out and talk it through, and the relationship's getting worse and worse and worse. And sometimes if we stop and touch, everything gets better. You just reach out and touch your partner in the middle of a conversation, uh, an argument, things get back to normal because you get out of your heads and back into your connection, which is a more metaphysical type of thing. So yes, absolutely there's times when you're going to say, I don't want to make love right now, I need to say what I'm going to say. There's also times when you're going to say, I don't know what to say, this isn't going anywhere, let's make love and see what happens. And see if that resolves our, our conversation problem. Let's see if we can reconnect, remember what we're connect how we're connecting. Now, I don't I suggest this on first dates, <laughs> unless that's how you roll. Of course. So, I totally agree with you. Yeah. I wasn't saying that, it uh, was never ever meant to imply that you always just have sex and that takes care of your problems. Never. Okay? I'm just saying at some times, that can be more effective than, this took me a long time to learn. It can actually be a more effective kind of communication than trying to talk through the problem. Sometimes at that moment. It's another form of communication that can actually be more effective. So sometimes when we're getting in that, this conversation is going nowhere, instead of going, obviously if I don't want to, I'm not ever advocating that anyone 
anybody in any situation have sex if you don't want to. But I am saying we sometimes we can understand that that's a form of communication being offered to us that we're resoundingly rejecting because we live in a sex negative culture. We go, no, I don't want to have sex, I want to talk. Instead of like, that is another form of communication available to us in this moment. And I could still say no to it, but I've been interpreting always as sex or talking. There's a, another option available, which is it is a form of talking. And sometimes when you get back into that state of being so close, looking in each other's eyes, making love, sometimes it transcends those problems, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes getting back into that, sometimes getting into that connection. What's that? Sure, at times it can be avoiding. Right. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, can I reach out and try to connect? If I'm noticing that he's not connecting at this moment, can I help him connect? Maybe I can't. Right. How? If I can't get him to connect with me, then I don't know if this is, you know, that's a whole other issue. So we can see a lot of these behaviors, such as, why in the middle of this conversation does he just want to have sex as this is an attempt to find love in this moment. If I don't like it, I'll say no because I'm in the driver's seat, I'm in my power. But I'm going to understand that it's also a bid for connection and love. In a different language than I speak, maybe. But it's a very effective language. Sex is a very effective language that men and women have that isn't verbal, except for those few things we say, but it's, it is a communication. It is a way to work out problems. It is a way to reconnect without having to do all this psychologizing. It's absolutely, most of the time, much more effective, but we've become so psychologically minded, we have these long talks that are making everything worse. So.